guys, um, sitting on board the uh, Boeing 747-400 ERF in Shanghai. And uh, last week I showed you a little snippet of how we calculate our takeoff speeds for departure. So we're still loading the airplane right now and we've got all these doors open here as you can see. So they're loading the aircraft at the moment. So that means the doors are open. So, and um, so what happens is, if I start from the beginning, the aeroplane empty weight is known by the manufacturer, Boeing, or Airbus, or Embraer, whoever it is. When they manufacture an aeroplane, they know exactly how much it weighs, all the components on it, and um, all the stuff that goes with it when it's presented to a customer. Now that empty weight with all the necessary items required to operate the aeroplane like batteries, a little bit of fluid in the uh, engines and all that, the manufacturer calculates the maximum much weight they can put on the aeroplane, including fuel. So the fuel tanks are a known quantity again because we know how big the tanks are. Manufacturers who make the aeroplane know how, what size the fuel tanks are. So we know how much fuel we can take if we wanted to fill the tanks. We never actually fill the tanks most of the time on these aeroplanes. You only take the fuel that you need, plus fuel to an alternate and so on, because you want to carry as much, as much payload as you can. So, today we're in Shanghai. So who gives us the weight? Load control. If you have a look outside there, have a look there. See all those pallets? Those are all pallets that are going to be loaded on different aircraft, just the cargo side of aircraft. Now, all those pallets have got a specific weight and they'll be loaded in the aeroplane with a load plan. The load master knows a load plan of where he's going to put what pallet and what weight each pallet has. Once they've calculated the total weight, they'll send us a final zero fuel weight. That's aircraft weight plus cargo and everything else without any fuel on it. So that is based on the empty weight of the aircraft plus the cargo, that's called the zero fuel weight. So, uh, once they've done that, then we, knowing the aircraft weight, knowing the weather we, uh, we're going to encounter en route, knowing what delays or expected arrival at destination, knowing what sort of taxi route we're going to use here to go to the runway, we know exactly how much fuel we're going to need. So we take that fuel, add it to all that to give us a maximum takeoff weight. So it's the empty weight plus the cargo on top gives us a zero fuel weight. Zero fuel weight, we add the fuel, gives us the takeoff weight we're going to use. And for us, it comes in a load sheet like that. We've just, I've just printed this out for you to see. So we're going Shanghai, Hong Kong, that's our flight number. There's two crew and that just gives us the zero fuel weight as you can see there. That's the aircraft empty weight plus the cargo. It's going to be 281 tons nearly. We've decided we're going to take 40.6 tons of fuel at takeoff. That gives us a takeoff weight at takeoff of 321.5 tons. That's in thousands of kilograms. The trip fuel to Hong Kong is 24,900 and we'll be landing in Hong Kong at 296,591 kilograms. The representative maximum weights for each, this is the ERF, is 288 for maximum zero fuel weight. That's the maximum they could load on. And then the maximum takeoff weight, as you can see there, is restricted to 397, 315. Maximum landing weight is 302, 092. So today we're landing not far off max landing weight at 296 tons, as you can see. And then all the positions and the cargo loaded is here. These are all the positions on the main deck of the 747. And each weight for each pallet, 3,798 for that, 4,200, and so on. So all the positions, that will determine the center of gravity. And then we check it, and at the end, I sign it to say, okay, I accept that. And uh, we'll take this aircraft to Hong Kong. When we've done all our checks in the EFB here, I've shown you this before. There's the OPT, Operational Performance Tool, which is a Boeing app, I would say. Select that, go there. Going to select the ERF today, 
So we've got the 400 F or ERF dash A triple seven triple seven three hundred. So we're in the seven four seven ERF. I'll select that. The registration of this aeroplane is B B my Indian Alpha. There it is. B L I A. I'll select that. And then we've got the performance for takeoff page. On here, I'll select Shanghai, which is Z S P D. And then there's all the runways and the drop down menu. We're expecting a departure of 3 4 left, that's what they're giving. So I'll select 3 4 left. Am I going to use the full length of the runway? Most likely at this weight. So at the moment, the conditions outside are dry, so I'll select dry from the drop down menu. And if you look there, it's got dry, wet, sanding water, slush, compacted snow, dry snow, all sorts of conditions. So it's dry at the moment, so I'll stick to dry. The wind is almost zero so I'll use zero to be conservative so the wind I've decided to go with zero to be more conservative we've actually got probably three or four knots of headwind so zero will be fine just in case the wind does change and uh, drops off a little bit we'll be conservative the temperature at the moment is three degrees but it is getting a little bit warmer so I'll go with four degrees again so that we're covered for the takeoff weight. The QNH is quite high, 1031 at the moment. So I enter all this stuff in here and then the takeoff weight, I get that from the load sheet, which I've printed out for you guys. Normally it's in there electronically, but I printed it out 321491. So I'll just put it as 321.5. 321. 0.5 and then the center of gravity the CG position with the loading that's taking place is going to be 22.81 so I'll put in 22.8 22.8 there we are so aircraft weight comes from the load control will give us the actual loading that's getting on the aeroplane that added to the empty weight of the aircraft gives us a zero fuel weight then we decide how much fuel for that weight for the destination that we're going to it gives us a final takeoff weight so all that works and then I press the calculate button calculation in progress and it comes back with the speeds so it comes back with flaps 20 it says is what we're going to need runway 3 4 left which we put in so essentially these things are what we put in uh, 321.5 takeoff weight engine out acceleration is a thousand feet that's standard if, it, if there's terrain and so on this could be higher and we're going to take off with a derated takeoff thrust 2 of 1.30 on the EPR there's a VMCG there for reference and we're going to use an assumed temperature of 51 degrees C so the thrust we're using is as if the temperature outside is 51 degrees C that's the thrust that will be coming from the engines to lift 321.5 tons so we don't need all the thrust that saves the engines uh, makes less noise and it's good for long term for the aircraft so our v1 is going to be 140 vr 156 v2 163 and there's reference there vref to make sure that we haven't made uh, a mistake with the gross weight calculation you get a vref check there of 164 and it should be within one knot of the v2 okay so now we know our speeds the uh, other pilot does his, his or her own calculation and then we compare the two there's a compare function and that will tell us each pilot makes that calculation and gets the data for herself or himself and then we do a cross check there's a compare function in the efb i can select compare and then it will cross check the other efb if there's a mismatch in any data it will come up and say what the data is if there's no mismatch it just comes up and says no mismatches which means the data inserted there by the uh, other pilot and myself is the same so that's one cross check that we do uh, to make sure we're using the same data but uh, importantly here is also a vref for the actual weight of the aircraft so if that's drastically different to the v2 we'll know there's something wrong with the weights as well so the everything is cross-checked all the time there you go so that's where we get our speeds from so we're going pretty 
decent speed for V2 or 163 and we climb away at V2 plus 10 so 173 as we climb away on our way to Hong Kong later.